Hi, welcome to Nourishing Body and Soul, the podcast. Get ready to revitalize your mind, body, and soul. We're here to inspire women who are looking to break free from old patterns and ideas to create a life of increased confidence and improved health. Say goodbye to limiting beliefs and hello to new possibilities. So kick back, get ready to have some fun, and let's dive in. We'll uncover tools and insights that can help you build a life that's truly nourishing body and soul. Hello, welcome to the podcast. I'm Tracy and I'm Victoria and we're glad you're here with us today. Uh, so my I know better than is like seriously I know better than and proves how hard old habits are to break. I was having a snack yesterday and I have not been a calorie counter in a long time. Mm -hmm. And I noticed on the bag, it's like, oh, so many pieces are this many calories. And so as I'm eating, I'm like, oh, so if I had this many, and I had it's like, no, stop this, mm -hmm. stop this. <laughs> it's like, how? You eat these until you're satisfied, until you eat. It's like, don't even worry about the calories. And, it, and I wasn't really worried about them. But it was still was just this automatic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how many calories? Like, did you do because you you taught Weight Watchers? So mm -hmm. did you do points in your head for a really long time? No. Like, oh yes, for like, a long yeah, time. Yeah. I have not, not, not now, but like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I could just bat like yeah. Because even me, I didn't even teach or anything, but like it just naturally. Yeah. Some yeah. things I still know. So I might have better than to worry about the calories on the with the serving size on the bag. But I went through anyway. Old yeah. habits, man, old habits. But I stopped myself, so there's that. All right. Well, I know better then. But yesterday I was talking about to Tracy. I was talking about um that I gained some weight. And I said, but I'm glad I still kept my fat clothes. And I called them fat clothes. And I saw this like look of shock. I shoot across her face really fast and then like she controlled it or whatever <laughs> but like the idea that I called them fat clothes and I realized yeah that's that's probably not like the most <laughs> entertaining well it might be more entertaining but like it's not healthy no. to call our clothes to label our clothes other than their labels I guess <laughs> this size that's what yeah right, but what did you think because yeah. I saw it go across your face and, well um Honestly, the first thing I was thinking is like, in all the time I've known you, I've never, you've never been any size that I would consider fat. Mm -hmm. And so it's like just that whole, you know, to somebody who weighs 600 pounds, somebody who weighs 300 pounds is not fat. Mm -hmm. To somebody who weighs 300 pounds, somebody who weighs 200 pounds is not fat. Yeah. And so it's just, it's just so subjective. It is. So it subjective. Is. So that was, that was the, thing. okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, I was just um, doing on the uh, my got my diet culture funhouse challenge going while when we record this at the same time period, and uh, we were just talking about food and eating. And oh, uh, yesterday we were talking about weight and weight loss and how diet culture has really just messed that up. And one of the things that came up was you know when, not when again I say when, but I know it's been our whole lifetime how did fat become such an insult yeah and i think bless my sister who is overweight and i put that in quotes because what's the ideal weight for somebody i'm not going to say um but she made a comment in front of her husband and she said something about you know being fat and he automatically oh don't say that don't um, say that yeah and she wasn't like oh i'm so fat like mm -hmm. Many of us have done it. Yeah. Or do I look yeah. fat in these jeans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she was just like, I'm fat and da, da 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 And so, but to him, for her, it was not an insult. It was not putting herself down. But to him, he automatically had felt like he had to, you know, to comfort her. And, and mm -hmm. he was being very nice. It's not like he's being condescending or anything. Yeah. But it was just, you know, and think about elementary school. One of oh, the yeah. worst insults you could throw at somebody. Is, is to call them fat. Yeah. And it's just well they called me bubble butt. We need they to call disempower me that word. I wasn't really ever fat, but they called me bubble butt, which now is like a huge compliment. 
but at the time back yeah. then back then in the eighties that was not a compliment that was a that was a you know you another wanted to form, look like you needed to look like thing. yeah you needed to look like Kate Moss or you know you yeah. needed that like long and yeah Christy Burlington or somebody yeah. some yeah runaway <gasps> supermodel yeah so this actually kind of segues into today we're talking about to me what has been one of the most impactful books this book is the culture code by I I have never heard his name pronounced so and he's French so I'm going to try to say it. Clotaire Rappé Rappé yeah Rappé so that's my guess the culture okay. code okay um and it actually is a book that was part of my, it was part of my training one of the books that I needed to get when I was certified get my getting my certification and it, it was just been so eye opening to me. So eye-opening. So first of all, I just want to read from the book. I'm going to read from the book a couple of times, but this is just to, just to explain what a culture code is. Um, this guy's a psychotherapist. So the culture code is an unconscious meaning that we apply to any given thing. A cat, a type of food, a relationship, even a country, via the culture in which we are raised. So it's what it, what's the cultural perspective of whatever item mm -hmm. so that's what the cultural the culture code is and we're going to talk about a few of the code words for the american culture um on a couple of different topics that are pertinent to what we do here but it's a fascinating book it talks about a lot more topics than we're in power so that's what the culture code is um he has developed this process where he takes it's a three hour process he takes whatever his you know group is and whatever the topic is that that he has been hired by the likes of like Nestle and uh, Jeep and uh, you know other companies you've heard of and he does this process where in the first hour you know what actually I have that so let me just kind of go over that um yeah Okay, so his process, it's a three hour process. So I just wanna read how he structured it. He says, I structured a three hour session with each of the groups in the first hour I took the on the persona of a visitor from another planet. Someone who had never seen coffee. He's at this point in time, he's working for Nestle. trying They're trying to get coffee to take off in Japan. Um, I took on the persona of a visitor from another planet, someone who had never seen coffee before and had no idea how one used it. I asked for help understanding the product, believing their descriptions would give me insight into what they thought of it. In the next hour, I had them sit on the floor like elementary school children and use scissors and a pile of magazines to make a collage of words about coffee. The goal here was to get them to tell me stories with the, these words that would offer me further clues. In the third hour, I had the participants lie on the floor with pillows. There was some hesitation among members of every group, but I convinced them and I, I wasn't entirely out of my mind. I put on soothing music and asked the participants to relax. What I was doing was calming their active brain waves, getting them to that tranquil point just before sleep. When they reached this state, I took them on a journey back from their adulthood, past their teenage years, to a time when they were very young. Once they arrived, I asked them to think again about coffee and to recall their earliest memory of it. For the first time, they consciously experienced it and their most significant memory of it if that memory was a different one. So it's this process of going back to really what your very first imprint is with any given thing. And that is the, the code for that culture on that item. Yes. So that's how that works. So today we wanted to go over a few of the things that are the code words in our American culture that are really eye-opening, I think. Mm -hmm. And then explain a lot of why that's why reading this book, there are so many things that I went, oh my gosh, that explains so much about attitudes and thoughts towards these various things. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to hopefully give you a little eye-opening bits today. Yes. So the first one that we're going to talk about is beauty. The code for beauty in the American culture is man's salvation. <laughs> yes, yeah, man's salvation. It is. Yes, 
the thing. What do you think? It's not what women's salvation. <laughs> it's not women's salvation, by the way, guys. It's man's salvation. <laughs> yeah. I I mean it's it's embarrassing how it's sort of like when we were talking about the male gaze. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's embarrassing like how sexist are sexist like deeply sexist not just slightly but deeply sexist we are in this country well and that yeah there's just so much on this we could just like go deep dive into this um but let me just read a little bit of this when asked to go back to their first and most powerful memories of their own beauty they recalled moments of romance of attraction of getting a man's attention Feeling beautiful was associated with dancing all night with a special man, with a brief, wonderful marriage. A brief, wonderful marriage? With a brief, wonderful marriage. Oh, this one woman that he's just talking about oh. specific experiences oh, these, okay. that these ladies have. With falling in love, with feeling like a movie star, with feeling cherished by a lover. Many of the stories revealed something even deeper. Statements such as, he was proud to be with me. He made a fuss. And I was the most special person to one other person suggested that beauty not only attracted a man, but also changed him in a substantial way at the same time. Men are programmed for sex and as much as he might protest the, this, the average man is willing to have sex with just about any woman willing to have sex with him. If a man notices a woman's beauty though, it's true by the way, <laughs> if, he's, if he stops to admire her physical magnificence, Rather than simply throwing her over his shoulder, mm -hmm. his soul is elevated to another level. So, in that regard, then beauty, not and contrasted in here with provocativeness, mm -hmm. beauty becomes man's salvation. And so, it's like it's what higher thing could we attain to than to be the salvation of man? Yeah. And these codes are not what truth is. These codes are just how a culture perceives something. Yeah. Let's make that really clear. Well, I think men think that too. I mean, like, oh. like they are describing, like describing men, but men, that's what men think too, that that is what beauty is. If, if beautiful woman is someone, we've heard it to be on somebody's arm or, you know, arm candy or what have you. Just in the term, they're not marriage material. It's like, yeah, this is a woman that you would do all kinds of other things with. But she's not marriage material. Yeah. This woman is marriage yeah. material. Yeah. And it's a different thing. And even if you think about as when we're first, when we're young teenagers and we're first as girls being, um, you know, navigating that world of dating and noticing boys and all that, how many girls have been told you need to be careful because, you know, you don't want to wear that because you don't want the boys to think that you don't want to act this way because you don't want them to think this about you. And putting the responsibility for boys' thoughts on and actions, and actions yeah. on the girls. Yeah. And that that is completely on code with mm -hmm. this beauty being men's salvation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Meaning also that we are their their property in some way, you know, like their salvation is it's sort of encompassing, you know, how we are, we're just there for them. Yeah, you know, and it's in relation to them. Yeah. 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 Well, it's frustrating. I know when I was been dating, I have not really ever been told I was beautiful. And but I've been told I'm cute a lot. Mm -hmm. From the time I was like young, I've been told I was cute. And so I think code there's not I'm talking about it, but that code for that means like play for me. Like that's what I felt like meant like not not do bad things, like not slutty, but like like playful yeah. so I feel like I was always like the fun there one. yeah the fun one and there to entertain and there to be playful and never I never felt beautiful mm -hmm. I'm you know I mean that I in some ways like maybe because I don't know maybe because when I got older men were better I don't know mm -hmm. but yeah like yeah. like I I got told I was beautiful ironically the older I then so anyway not yet man salvation obviously <laughs> and you were told you're you so obviously <laughs> you are yeah so there you go so yeah so i can save some men i've saved so, so many men <laughs> i should be clear i'm sorry but and and that i mean what 
Okay. Responsibility. Inappropriate responsibility that puts on a woman. Yes. Yes. That, that and is. the fact that it's related to beauty, it's like, well, then it's my obligation to mm -hmm. be beautiful because I'm letting down yeah. the whole human race mm -hmm. if I'm not doing my best to be as beautiful as I can. I never felt like I was going to let down anybody's, like the whole human race. <laughs> but I did feel, I mean, you, yeah, you do things. You don't, there's things you don't want to do. I think like scuba diving is a good example of that. Like girls don't look, they like there's bodily fluids. It's just not a pretty sport when you're learning. I talked about that once mm -hmm. before. But you come, you you're not beautiful. Like it it traditionally, make like you, traditionally, you're the not, hair's not done. Yeah, and yeah, and so, but you feel strong, and you feel like you could conquer the world. You feel I don't know if I've ever felt more beautiful than I have. Like either during or after scuba dive. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but that's not. You know, that's not man's salvation. That's you know, me feeling my own strength. Yeah. And I, I right. hope that it's so we can at least change beauty being to at least our own salvation. <laughs> <laughs> so I, at least we can control our own like, salvation. <laughs> there you go. But it also explains why we're willing to spend so much money. Yes. To yes. chase after and preserve. Yes. That. Yes. Yeah. Chase yeah. after and preserve, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I this is should have been an I know better, but whatever. I am not been able to sleep a lot at night. And I so just put on something that was really stupid and I just noticed the Kardashians came back. And I legitimately have not watched the Kardashians in like, I don't know, 20 years. I don't know. The girls like the Kylie and those guys were kids the last time I watched. So anyway, I just watched like a couple of episodes, but I'm just stunned with how different they all look, but still wrinkle-free and perfectly preserved. Mm -hmm. But you can tell how much the like plastic surgery they've had and like everything lifted and tucked and like it just yeah, and reshaped and every like their nose and everything. Just and I think I, it's probably just a shock to me because. Because of, I haven't watched this yeah. like progression of what they look like. I just, yeah. and it's almost like, it's entertaining in this like super perverse way to go, whoa, like, you know, so anyway, yeah. It's an I know better than <laughs> you watch it, but it's, it's shocking to me. Like how, so I'll post the other day, it's like, just, you know, fine, like Kardashians last season after how many years? I don't know how many years. And I, you know, it's like, and I'm happy to say I've never watched a single episode. It's yeah. like, okay, I can join you on that train. I yeah. 100% yeah. not follow. No, there's not anything. All of that business. No. I but, had a friend. So it's like, I have no perspective on it. My that. friend loved watching them. So when we go over there, she would have it recorded. Because I don't know, she wanted me to share in her love for the Kardashians, which I did not. But, but anyway. you saw the episode. So but I saw the episode. Not so I had a perspective. Yeah. 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 Anyway, interesting. Yeah. So, our so next, preserving the yeah. whole point is yeah. preserving well, and making sure we still stay yeah. as whatever we and what our culture deems beautiful is not so man's salvation is not an older salvation it is a youthful salvation <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. and so then, yeah and anyway it's not like we said it's not truth but it's just eye-opening to realize okay that's it just explains so many things and so then we can take that and we can decide what works first and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. But be aware. Right. It's, it's be interesting aware. to be aware. Yeah, 100%. And the next one to be aware, and we've mentioned this before, I'm pretty sure, because I mention this often, um, that the code, the American code for food is fuel. And that feels right, though, doesn't it? <laughs> It does feel true. Yes. And that's, and so, but it's like, yeah, not right. Where it's not yeah. a bit true. Yeah. It, it, it feels like it, like, okay, well, what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. But what that does is one thing, it reduces our, it's like, if that's fuel, fuel goes in a machine. Sometimes it, and it's like, yeah. then our body's a machine and there's that whole fallacy. Mm -hmm. And it just really reduces food to, something that I mean, it first does it fuel our body yeah hello mm -hmm. <laughs> but also there's so much more to it going back to that that meal that you had in france it was 10 hours long 
in other cultures and some of the European cultures, the code it was six. The right. code yeah. for people. Oh, the code. Six oh, solid though. Yeah. yeah, we started at six and we ended at midnight. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So this just sounds heavenly. Um, but in other cultures, it's gathering. Yeah. And it's oh that's and, good. and community. Mm-hmm. That's the code for food. Yeah. And in how healthy and in, lovely isn't that gathering in community? Yeah. Like that's what food means. Doesn't that just sound so much better than eating your frozen dinner, like your little teensy frozen dinner in front of TV, mm-hmm. or yeah. running through the drive through and scrapping down your yeah. car as fast as you yeah. can? I mean, that's another thing that food is fuel really facilitates mm-hmm. is eating so quickly with so little regard to um, what what we're putting in our bodies yeah. for one thing and how it's prepared and, and, and the ingredients yeah and just there's no pleasure in it there's no i mean it takes the joy out of it and there's so much joy and enjoyment that can be had with food pleasure with food is nothing i love yeah. talking about but in our culture it's it's something that's almost i like, like it's it. a guilty pleasure you know i mean i know they have mcdonald's all over do they mm-hmm. have drive throughs are their drive throughs the same like i've seen I mcdonald's at other countries but i don't remember them being well i don't remember them being drive throughs at all but i haven't mm-hmm. you know obviously i haven't been to all these countries i don't know that'd be interesting yeah too. because i mean that I'm really that check. idea of like that is very much fuel like i see like mm-hmm. you know like i have like these i just picture like in this cage these little pellets that come down and the rats come and they <laughs> eat the pellet and then they run <laughs> the next rat comes these pellets and run that like that whole going through the drive through yeah. feels very like that yeah you know so i don't know if they if they do that in other countries at least they will have to want we'll to look that yeah we'll have to do a little research um but yeah, it's the just that idea of oh, and also when we're done with the meal here, often we say oh, I'm full. It's more common, like in France. That's not what they say. They say that was delicious. Mm. That's the comment at the end of the meal. Interesting. Often, yeah. And so it's just this whole idea of food being fuel, and then then that also feeds so well into the okay, now I'm going to eat this many calories and this many carbs and this much protein yeah. and this, and just every little nuance of everything. It's like you're formulating your fuel. The other thing is like at the beginning of any meal that I have been anywhere, you know, you do a toast, even mm-hmm. if it's like bon appetit or kung mm-hmm. pai, you know, or whatever it is, kung pai is Japanese, but like whatever it is, you do like something that's like, okay, here us together, mm-hmm. here we go. We're gonna, we're all in this together mm-hmm. eating well. Mm-hmm. Whereas I don't, I mean, that's not a normal thing. I don't think it might be for people going out to eat mm-hmm. in a nice dinner, but it's not a normal thing for families. Don't do that at Burger King. Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody raises their like, I hate Burger King. Burger King kicked me out once, by the way. This is a random story that no one needs to hear, but they kicked me out once. And I, I think we do need to hear it. No, nothing. It's kind of thing. It was in Gridley and our Burger King just barely opened. And we'll say it's super fast because it's, it's dumb. There were some other people who were there who were disturbing the peace. And there was me and my two friends. And my two friends and I. And um, they they were kick me everybody out and I was like no you're not even kick me out because these are the people making noise I'm not making noise and so um my two friends were and they said well, we're gonna call the cops if you don't leave and I was like call them because we're in Gridley and I know the cost so yeah call them and so they started to and my two friends were like get out you weirdo like but you don't have to fight everything you don't need to fight city hall every single place you go so anyway so I was resentful towards Towards, um, that's it. Yeah, for example. Yeah. See, this is her Burger King imprint. Yeah, yeah, exact, <laughs> exact. Her my code, code for Burger King is bullies. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Injustice, injustice, yes. injustice, injustice. <laughs> yeah. injustice. Like, that's her personal code for that. Mm-hmm. You know, wow, my mom. She if she goes to Burger King, she comes home with a Burger King cup. She's still like, what's it mean? Both look guilty. <laughs> These forgiven moms and codes are powerful. <laughs> I don't need to hold on to my codes. It's the same. This is hair is driving me nuts. I apologize, people. I swear I tried to do my hair before I came. So moving on to our next one, we'll go to health and wellness. And the American code for health and wellness is movement. Which, again, 
That could seem accurate, right? Yeah, I thought that felt very accurate. But what that does is that now if you're in a position where, you know, you break your leg and you can't move, you can't exercise, then there's this feeling of either anxiety or less than, or it becomes a more difficult thing than it needs but to be. But you've broken your leg, so it's not healthy. <laughs> Or well, <laughs> but, but excuse me. Once but it takes away the process of oh, this is just a different experience. Mm. Now I have to yeah. I have to slow down. I have instead of honoring that process of healing. Yes. Then it just becomes a burden mm -hmm. because you can't move. Yeah. And so now it increases the stress of not being able to move. I'm not now. I'm not healthy. Now I can. And so there's just there is much more to health than movement and there's much more to wellness much more to wellness than movement mm -hmm. but that's what we associate with associate with just being able to to do things to whereas you know if we look at i for me very guilty of this look at um like tai chi this is a very honored form of movement yes it is in asian culture mm -hmm. and i think that's like I love that. That doesn't count for anything. Drive, That's not real. Drive down by parks in San Francisco, and they're like all these little groups doing Tai Chi. I was, this makes me it always made me so happy seeing that. Yeah. But you know that's a but that was cultural too. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. It's not a. Yeah. yeah. That's not real. No. That's not real exercise. Yeah, it's not real exercise, and that can lead us to things like I mean, how good is yoga? But. If you're associated with health and wellness with movement, there's not a lot of movement in your way. You're not doing anything. Or meditation. And meditation, meditation is so hard. Yeah, it is meditation is very off code mm -hmm. for America yeah. because there's there's not movement. Mm -hmm. And so discounting the the power of health and wellness mm -hmm. that is contained within meditation. Mm -hmm. But if not they, movement, so it they, doesn't count. There was a school that um, their kids, they were having the kids meditate. Mm -hmm. They do then the, whatever their exercise was, and then they meditated. Mm -hmm. And the parents were so upset that their kids were doing some weird thing. Like not so, the breathing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Relaxing and like preparing their minds to learn. They like threw a whole production number and they had to stop doing meditation at the school because the parents were like, that's not, mm -hmm. that's not real. That's like, you're doing some creepy fake weirdo thing just saying like the just the culture mm -hmm. the, the culture as we are trying to change it for the better mm -hmm. is not it's, it's not very it's resisting of what is viewed as inactivity yeah 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 so i just thought that that explains a lot as well about our attitudes and our unwillingness to slow down mm -hmm. that also plays into or you know the food is fuel everything's keep it fast keep it moving mm -hmm. keep going yeah because that proves you're, you know, mm -hmm. on code. That proves you're healthy. Yeah. You're moving. You're doing stuff. You're 10,000 steps. Right. You're 10,000 yeah. steps. <laughs> you know, that's healthy. <laughs> <laughs> moving those arms with yeah. those watches that are saying you're doing steps. <laughs> yes. You can do this. <laughs> and your watch will count them as steps, just so you know. <laughs> so you can do 10,000 steps this way. I'm just saying it's, it's movement. It is moving. Um, and then our last one, we've got the, the code for fat is not going to be any surprise is checking out. Um, it is the, it's viewed as a spectator sport as being, wait, what? Being fat. It's a spectator sport. You're, you're observing life. Oh, part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're checking out. Mm -hmm. You're just being a spectator. Yeah. And you, it, like in giving up and just mm -hmm. like whatever i'm not gonna do yeah. it. um some of these yeah, like not so. but it's like not being part of society right i mean that's the whole thing it's not even like you're on the outskirts of what what society is yeah. like, you know like banished yeah like lepers um i, mean, I don't want to read just in a lumber call parts of and jesus it's fine <laughs> jesus would come and visit the fat yeah. <laughs> yes he would <laughs> Not to get all religious on y'all but the in in this for every one of these um topics that he addresses he's got some of the quotes that are pulled from people that were in these sessions that he was doing 
Now I'm going to just read a couple of these because I thought they were just really, I think they would be very relatable. Um, and so when he was doing this, this session about fat with these, with this group, um, this, uh, 22 year old said, um, that this is the very last part of everything he said, I took off 30 or so pounds and felt very proud and successful. At 20 years old, her pride and her success was tied to weight loss. Um, this other woman talks about when she was 12 and um, she decided that she needed to go on a diet and she lost 20 pounds. And their neighbor said, the next door neighbor told my mom I was too skinny. That was great. And this is, was by a woman in her late 50s. And that happened when she was 12 and still that meant so much to her that somebody had called her too skinny. Um, here's another one, first grade, um, going shopping for school uniforms and needing to get a different size. I remember my, or, um, it was tight around the arms. It says, I felt like a bad person because I was bigger than my friends. This just starts so young. Um, yeah, it does. This one. How much of our self-esteem is tied up mm -hmm. in what we weigh? That is, it's so damaging mm -hmm. and so true mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um this woman in her 50s talked about when she was four or five years old um going on a bike ride with her family and seeing her mom who was large going with them but just looking so uncomfortable on that little bicycle seat and she said i would have liked to have made her thinner and therefore more comfortable in clothes, going out, being more active. Four or five years old was concerned about the size of her mom mm -hmm. and how it impacted her activity. It's probably because her mom talked about it. Could be. Uh, this is ex from a 61-year-old woman. I feel repulsed by a man that is fat. It's one of the first things I notice about a prospective suitor. Repulsed in her 60s. And um, what did matter was the way that they spoke about these things. Losing weight and being thin made people feel proud and successful at how their clothes fit perfectly. Being overweight, on the other hand, related to being punished, keeping inside, and being a real turnoff. For Americans, the opposite position on the axis from fat is connection. Wow. So the connection yeah. is not there when we're, depending on what size we are. Or when we're looking at other people. Um, again, in the challenges, it came up, the Diet Culture Funhouse Challenge, it, in the talk, it came up about the damage that this does to relationships. How our relationship with ourself, because we, if we take in this whole idea that that is checking out, mm -hmm. that promotes the idea that well, you're lazy. Yeah. You're you have no self control. You have no willpower, and all of these things that are not desirable qual qualities. And then, so we look at somebody, and rather than a going whatever size they are, they are who cares, mm -hmm. or going okay, well, they you know looking at them, obviously they're eating too much. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're not exercising enough. Mm -hmm. Obviously. They're not as healthy as they could be. Mm -hmm. All of these things are false assumptions. No. The other thing is a lot of them, in some sort of a lot of them are subconscious. Yeah, I mean those aren't necessarily. We don't look at somebody and like sub, you know consciously think that. We might consciously think of it ourselves. And the thing that's a little bit not a little bit, the thing that's a lot sad about it, and when we talk about connection, is our partners. You know, for the. the I'm, our partners love us, right? Well, I don't have a partner, but I have been in a relationship where mm -hmm. there's love. And, you know, I gained weight when I've been in a relationship and he loves me just the same. Mm -hmm. And the intimacy changes for me because I think, oh, I don't want him to see my body. I don't want this. I don't want that. And, you know, I, I, and that's not how he feels. Mm -hmm. And I think we, as women, um, we close ourselves off the bigger that we get when in reality our partner still wants the same connection it's our 
you know, it might be our our guilt, guilt our guilt and our mm -hmm. shame. Mm -hmm. And it's not just in intimate relationships with mm -hmm. your partner. That's like if we're talking to somebody, be it a good friend or even a relative stranger, if we're talking to them and what we're thinking about is, oh my gosh, if I were known as running, coming right into them, I would not have worn these jeans. They were too tight and I probably would have fathom them. Yeah. Um, then that's causing a barrier in that relationship yeah. and how we're reacting. Mm -hmm. If we're feeling that way toward ourselves mm -hmm. or then if we're feeling that way about somebody else, mm -hmm. it puts that barrier there. It's really really damaging our relationships our relationship with ourselves, and our relationship with close people and our relationship with relative strangers yeah and that i think is the biggest cost mm -hmm. of diet culture and these beliefs yeah is the damage it does in relationships mm -hmm. and most principally i think in the relationships with ourselves mm -hmm. because if we have a healthy relationship with ourselves, that automatically translates to healthier relationships with other people mm -hmm and more connection with other people mm -hmm. so it's this it's just really um sad yeah i just feel like you know we can sometimes take ourselves out of society in different ways mm -hmm. when the thing that we need the most like you know a lot of people use food for comfort mm -hmm. or you know love or whatever mm -hmm. not just fuel yeah <laughs> like you know the thing that we need the most is is connection, connection. Mm -hmm. and we are like we're damaging that mm -hmm. you know it's like a double mm -hmm. blind yeah. kind of thing yeah. where you you're damaging the connection yeah yourself by sabotaging it and getting the connection with food which then damages you know just yeah. it, it yeah. perpetuates a bad circle yeah yeah um and so the quote of checking out understanding the code this is a quote again from the book understanding the code allows us to address our weight issues in much more profound ways than eating bacon cheeseburgers without bread, purchasing exercise equipment that rusts in our basement, or consuming huge quantities of negative calorie foods before bed. Nor is the answer simply good nutrition and active lifestyle, although both are vital to maintaining health. Before we can conquer da, 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 the solution of fat, we need to ask one fundamental question and that would be am i checking out because sometimes it is when we're using like you just talked about when we're using food for a form of protection and a form of soothing and that is causing weight gain then we are checking out yeah and so it's not like well we're never checking out that's just a wrong code the question is are we and if we are then we can address that. Mm -hmm. And again, not an easy thing to do, but knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And we rec if we recognize that that's what we're doing, then we can do something about it. Yeah. So Culture Code, highly recommend. It's such an interesting book. Such an interesting book. So in the meantime, take this new knowledge and see where it lands for you. All right. Till next time. See everybody. Have a good week. Okay, so this is embarrassing because I always made fun of people who did this, but like and subscribe. <laughs> Turns out it's important. Well, it's only it's it's only it's important because if you like what you're listening to and seeing and you want to find it again, it makes it easier for you to find it. And then also it makes it easier for other people to find it. Mm -hmm. So if you like us, like. Like, like, like us. Yeah. Like and yeah. Like put a ring on it. Like yeah. us. Yeah. Then like and subscribe and it'll make us easier to find. Hey, it's Tracy. If this was helpful and you'd like more, follow me on Instagram at tlastel.nourishingbodyandsoul or on Facebook or YouTube at Nourishing Body and Soul. Or you can find my website at nourishingbodysoul.com. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishing Body and Soul, the podcast. Before we wrap up, we just want to remind you that the information we share in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and is not intended for medical advice. While we hope you find our discussions helpful, we strongly recommend that you seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider before making any changes to your diet, exercise routine, or any other aspect of your health. 
We also want to make it clear that the host, guests, and producers of this podcast are not responsible for any adverse effects or consequences that may result from the use of any information or suggestion discussed in this podcast. We care about your well-being, but we can't take responsibility for individual outcomes. By listening to this podcast, you agree to indemnify and hold harmless the host, guests, and producers of this podcast from and against any and all claims, damages, liabilities, costs, and expenses arising from your use of the information provided in this podcast. We're so grateful for your support, and we hope you keep listening and learning with us. Thanks.